Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be making a form of thermite that is a bit more aggressive. Um, it is known as thermate in technical terms, I guess. Uh, so it has a few more ingredients than thermite. Uh, so traditional thermite is just iron oxide, red iron oxide, and um, aluminum powder. So I have both of those. Thermate actually includes three more ingredients. So, we have sulfur powder, which helps make the ignition temperature a little bit lower and it just makes the reaction a little bit easier to continue and to start. And we have barium nitrate, which works as an oxidizer, which, you know, any oxidizer is going to help any sort of flame. And since thermite is an exothermic reaction, obviously an oxidizer is going to help in that. And lastly, we have dextrin which only makes up about 0.3% of the total mass of the thermite, or the thermate, uh, which is why people tend to often forget it, because the reaction will still work pretty well, even without the dextrin, but I'm gonna include it because I wanna have the best reaction I can possibly make. I would highly recommend that you do not try this at home, and I am not liable for any injuries that you may cause yourself. But, if you do want to make this stuff at home, I would recommend that you first start by making standard thermite with just these two ingredients. Uh, and you get acquaintance with that and you work your way up to thermate. Uh, something cool about barium nitrate, by the way, is that it's used in fireworks to make uh, the green star effect you might see sometimes. So anyway, let's get right into this video. Okay, so unfortunately my camera broke. I, it, it, it just keeps doing this and doesn't do anything. Uh, I'm buying a new camera soon. I have this GoPro, but the mic quality is atrocious. So I guess I'm just gonna use my phone because it has a better mic than the GoPro. Okay, this needs to stop. Okay, so I set my phone up on a uh, pretty redneck tripod, but hopefully it works for this video. I'm gonna start by making just standard uh, thermite. Um, so I'm gonna make a 100 gram batch of thermate. So that means I'm gonna need about 68.7 grams of standard thermite. So I was thinking about putting this all in a beaker, but I think it's probably smarter if I just put, them all in the, put it all in this uh, plastic container. Thermite is about 75% iron oxide and about 25% uh, aluminum powder. So what I'm gonna do is try and measure out 68 grams of that. And so I'm gonna need 51.5 grams of this iron oxide and I'm gonna need about 17.2 grams of the aluminum powder. Okay, so I measured out the 68.7 grams of the two substances. Uh, I'm gonna add the sulfur now. So we want about two grams of the sulfur. 1.7 and two. Okay, cool. Set this aside now. Do I zip it up? And now we're gonna want 29 grams of the barium nitrate. I'm gonna measure out the 29 grams, put it in there, and then I'll also measure out the 0 0.3 grams of dextrin. All five of the chemicals have been added to the container. Let's put this over here. And I'm just going to mix it together now. Very, uh, you want to do a folding technique when you mix this stuff. Uh, you don't want to do any grinding or anything that could cause any sort of friction. Because uh, you do not want this to ignite by accident. I'm going to finish mixing all this together. And I'm also gonna make a quick batch of 100 grams of standard thermite. And we're just gonna see uh, the difference between normal thermite and this thermate. Here are the two mixtures. This is standard thermite. And this is the thermate. If you look at them side by side, you can tell that the thermate is a little bit lighter in color. Okay, so here I have the thermate, an old pot and a little piece of magnesium wire. Uh, I'll be using that to light it. Here we go.
I believe that is it. That was clearly a very aggressive reaction. This is the inside of the pot. So the pot is still intact. This makes sense because for either of the materials to burn through anything, you sort of need to direct it and I just set it on top. I got a magnet and I picked up some of the iron that was created. As you can see, it's a bunch of tiny, tiny beads, almost like a powder of iron was created. Uh, let me try and get some on the gloves so you can see. Um, a lot of powder. When you make standard thermite, you usually see giant blobs of iron rather than powder. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Now I'm going to ignite the normal thermite. As you can see, the reaction was much longer, much slower, and much less aggressive. But it appears that we got a giant chunk of iron uh, out of this reaction, rather than a bunch of iron powder. So if you want to make iron powder, you should make uh, thermate. And if you want to make iron blobs, then you should make thermite. So about five, five grams maybe of the standard thermite did not react, but with the thermate, all of it completely reacted. After both of the reactions have occurred on this pot, we melted right through it. We got this very porous piece of uh, iron mixed with aluminum oxide, plus a little bit more over here, plus this piece right here. If you have any ideas for future videos, then just comment them below. I like to read the comments. Um, like and subscribe. And as always, peace out.